Hello there, my true crime cult. It's Breland here. Now I am finally home. I moved home from California to Louisiana. I will be posting all of my new true crime content on Thursdays. I also created a vlog channel if you want to see my live streams, vlogs, just my everyday life. I'll link my vlog channel in the description. I'd also like to mention that I moved into this really old apartment that I will be renovating myself. This is my actual bathroom, the only bathroom, and I thought it looked like a horror movie, so it would be very fitting to be my true crime background. So today we're going to be talking about this beautiful little girl. She was a baby and her name is Kylie Rodney. It's been a whirlwind of media coverage. This morning, the urgent investigation and desperate search for a missing 16-year-old girl. The search is on for a missing 16-year-old amid fear she's been abducted. There's a lot of information on this case and a lot of people involved. So I'm going to try to compact all of that into this one video including the most current information that we have. As always, let's start with when she was born. Kylie Mae Rodney was born September 1st, 2005 to her mom, Lindsay Neiman Rodney, and her dad, Daniel Rodney. She was born and grew up in the same town of Truckee, California, which is just north of Lake Tahoe. So her mom said that Kylie loved to play anything and everything as far as instruments goes. She started out with the violin, then she moved on to the guitar, then on to the ukulele, piano, so on and so forth. Here's a clip of seven-year-old Kylie playing her fiddle and belting out a beautiful country melody. From the time Kylie was brought home from the hospital till her disappearance, she lived and was raised in the Lost Trail Lodge, which is this magical ski lodge up in the mountains that her family owned and ran, located at 8600 Cold Stream Road. Right before Kylie disappeared, her family had put the lodge up for sale. Kylie would often perform with her grandfather for the guests at the lodge. You'd often see her by the fireplace, singing her little heart out and playing her violin. <laughs> there was also a piano that her and her grandfather loved to play. Kylie had a picture-perfect childhood. Not only did Kylie love music, but her and her family were always out and about doing some sort of outdoor activity. In the winter, they'd go sledding and ice skating, and in the summer, they would go kayaking and hiking through the beautiful wilderness. So Kylie was also a very experienced traveler from a young age. At the age of two, she took her first trip to Europe, and she had also traveled to Pompeii, Iceland, and she even swam in the Galapagos Islands. Her mom spoke about how much her daughter truly enjoyed life. Not only did she love music, but she was also a jokester. She loved to make people laugh. She loved dancing, acting silly, and baking. Plus, she was extremely intelligent. Not only book smart, but street smart too. It's also stated by multiple friends of hers that she was really strong, really tough, and she wouldn't take any shit off of anybody. She always stood up for herself and fought for what was right. 
So Kylie was actually homeschooled until eighth grade, and then she went on to Charter High School in Truckee, California. That's where she went on to graduate one year early from high school, and she was out by the time she was 16 years old. Not only that, she graduated with honors. Kylie has a little brother. He's only eight years old, and his name is Shep. So Shep's actually been seen at the recreation center with volunteers as they combed the local areas for clues. And Lindsay, her mom, had said that he's been holding up pretty well and just trying to keep the faith. He's eight years old, so it's a delicate balance of being old enough to understand what's going on, but young enough to not understand all the feelings all the time. So after graduating high school, there were a lot of her friends and peers who had also graduated, of course. They had all gotten together and agreed to throw a huge graduation party to celebrate their future and their accomplishments, so they started inviting people. The party was advertised on Instagram using this actual invite. This was later shared by someone who attended the party. Inviting everyone to a party is not a good idea. It also advertised that there would be minors there, easy prey for predators out there. They may as well have just said, vulnerable young minors available to be taken advantage of, because that's what this invite looks like to a predator. Hundreds and hundreds of people had already found out about it, and they knew that this party was going to happen in Lake Tahoe National Forest at the Prosser Family Campground. Now, this was a place that everyone, all of these kids were really used to going here. They had hung out there multiple times before, so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary or different from what they would normally do. Once the word spread about all these people being there, all of these young adults were also attending because they heard these high schoolers were gonna be there. I'm sure there were predators there, there were people there who had absolutely nothing to do with their graduation or their schooling. From what I've heard, there were a lot of substances at this party. So a lot of these young adults had brought tons of alcohol, they brought the green, there were other substances. There was just so much going on at this party. It was complete chaos. Like I said, Kylie was very well liked. She had lots of friends. So she decided to go with a friend to this party. So Kylie, along with her friend Mags Larson, got in the car and headed towards the party out in Lake Tahoe National Forest. Now, Mags had said in an interview and said multiple times that she actually went to the party with Kylie. So they rode to the party in Kylie's 2013 Silver Honda CRV. Mags claims that she's actually the best friend of Kylie, but there's multiple kids out there saying that they're the best friend of Kylie. I'm sure some of them are just saying it for the media attention, but apparently Mags is actually her bestie. So there's another friend of Kylie's who claims to be the last person to see her at this party. Her name is Samantha Smith. Samantha has done interviews as well. She's really been a key player in the search efforts. Sammy Smith, one of Kylie's good friends, is organizing crews of community members who are looking for the teen across the Tahoe region. Flyers are posted in neighborhoods, downtown Truckee, and at campsites. So Friday, August the 5th, 2022, Two hours prior to their arrival at the party, Kylie had stopped at a local convenience store and she was caught on surveillance wearing this outfit. 
She was wearing a black crop top, green pants, and black shoes. And then, a few hours later, Mags and Kylie arrived at the party the very same day at 8 p.m. Now, there's also witnesses that say she changed into a hoodie or something like that. It was this Lana Del Rey hoodie that she was wearing. And then it's also said that she was wearing this hoodie, which is this pink and white hoodie here. There are just so many different statements. Maybe she did wear these two separate hoodies during the night. There were over 300 in attendance. Kylie was at this party with multiple friends of hers, just hanging out, drinking, partying. I mean, she kind of deserved it after all the work she had put in to graduate. It is stated by some of the attendees that it seemed as though she was drinking a lot. She was having a fun time at a party, just being a teenager. Everything she drank, I drank out of, and there was nothing that seemed off about her. So now let's talk about Kylie's ex-boyfriend, Jagger Westfall. Then we can go. <laughs> Jagger said he actually had a text conversation with Kylie as she was attending this party. He told her to be safe and not to do anything stupid. So this is what Jagger had to say about the last time he spoke to Kylie. It's been five days since Kylie's boyfriend Jagger Westfall has heard from her. And so I was just like, okay, be safe. Don't like do anything stupid. He says he complained about his day and she listened. At 1030, she responded to what I was saying and just said, oh, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And that was the last marriage from her. So Kylie's friend Kate Kuno alleges that her and Kylie spent the day together Friday, August 5th. Kylie's close friend Kate Kuno says they spent the afternoon together on Friday, just hours before she disappeared. The day of the party, I hung out with her. We made creme brulee. She was, I mean, everything was normal. I don't think she ran away or I mean, I would have noticed if something was slightly off. Also want to note that Jagger lived four hours from this party and he was not in attendance. So here's an interview with Sammy where she describes what the party was like and how many people were actually there. We were both at the party together. We were going around together. We were like a little pair. Everybody kind of saw us together. We would split off for moments. So this is where everybody's hanging out. Kylie and I were meeting up right here a lot. Local young people call this open area near the Prosser family campground the sanctuary. It's a common place for parties. Sammy says she was here with Kylie Friday night, along with tons of other high school and college kids from the Bay Area all the way to Nevada. Right now our estimate is about 200 to 250, maybe more. There are people sitting in cars. There are people everywhere around this place. So according to both of Kylie's friends who attended this party, there was this group of sleazy guys there. There was a lot of guys that did approach us definitely i was getting a gut feeling during that that party that something something just didn't feel right with the amount of people that were there and how old some of these people were from the amount of people who did show up i it was scary so sammy said she was the last of kylie's friends to see and speak with her that night before she left the party what time did you last see her the last time i saw kylie was around 12 25 in the morning of the party i was leaving and i gave her a hug telling her i loved her and goodbye and for her to get home safe or be safe so a lot of people were questioning why her best friends would just leave kylie at this party knowing that she was under the influence. Kylie told them she was planning to spend the night at the campground. Smith got a ride home from the party at the end of the night. She says Rodney was planning to spend the night at the campground. I know that she was not in the right mindset or state to drive. And if she were to have driven, she wouldn't have made it far. So my concern is that somebody may have offered to drive her home, then didn't take her home. It seemed like Kylie wanted to stay at the party. Sammy did not. I was the last person to see her and talk to her, actually. She called me at 12.36 in the morning asking if I still needed a ride home from the party, even though about 10 minutes before that I had told her, like, I'm leaving, I already have another ride because I didn't want to drive home with her. Um, and so I had told her that, but she still ended up calling me at 12.36 asking if I needed a ride, and she sounded just really drunk, I guess. Sammy provided this photo from the party and it shows around 50 high schoolers and college kids 
standing around. It seems like there was some sort of altercation going on. I found some video that was allegedly at this party. Hundreds of underage teens were at the party. No cell phone clips have been turned in from this group. That could be evidence of Rodney leaving. So Mags Larson, the one who rode to the party with Kylie, she said she was also being hassled by the same group of guys, so she decided that she would leave the party with someone else. Mags actually left the party 10 minutes after she arrived with Kylie. She also compared the party to the novel Lord of the Flies, which is where a bunch of young kids crash onto a deserted island. There's no adults on the island, so in the end, it turns violent and brutal. So now let's talk about Kylie's last text conversation with her mom. Well, she just, you know, it was 1130 um, at night and she said that she was going to be planning on leaving about 1215 um, and, and heading home. And I told her to, uh, you know, be, be careful and wake me up when she when she got home. And she said, OK, Mama, I love you. And that was it. It was getting too late, so she went ahead and went to sleep, trusting that Kylie would come home. I woke up 8 o'clock on Saturday morning and immediately realized that she had not woken me up. And so, you know, I thought my husband was home. Maybe he just, maybe she checked in with him. And, um, and so I got up and I looked at the driveway and her car wasn't there and I looked at her room she wasn't there and I looked at I grabbed my phone and I looked for her location that she always shared with me and the last the last update it had was from the party site about midnight and so at that point I, I reached out to her dear friend to see if she was there and once we found out that she wasn't there once Kylie's mom confirmed she was not in the house and her vehicle was missing she immediately contacted authorities and reported Kylie missing on August the 6th search intensifying for 16 year old Kylie Rodney we have surveillance photos tonight captured just hours before Kylie was last seen right now investigators pouring through hundreds of tips in the case along with cell phone video we don't have an exact spot to look for and that is unusual especially with a large object like a car if anybody else out there if you know where she is if you know anything about where she might be if you have any ideas or or thoughts please um please come forward and share them and and we're not looking to like bust anybody else or get anybody in trouble we just want to see our daughter home after nearly two weeks of search efforts and 19,000 hours logged, they supposedly sent divers out to search Prosser Creek Reservoir, which is right near the campground, and still they found no clues. And that leads us to a YouTube channel called Adventures with Purpose. This is a channel dedicated to finding the missing. This case came to their attention after thousands of inquiries from their subscriber base, and they decided to do their own dive. So here's some clips from their video. I'll be sure to link their channel and their video in the description below if you'd like to watch the whole thing. We are on the side where the party was here at the campground. Is it a wheel? Confirm, confirm. I see the vehicle and the license plate. We have just found Kylie's vehicle over. I repeat, it is upside down. I'm at the rear of the vehicle now. I see a pair of shoes at the back. I'm moving my way towards the back window. I have just confirmed there are human remains in the vehicle over. Passenger window is broken out. Rear driver's side window is halfway down. She's in the back of the vehicle. It looks suspicious to me. As you saw, Adventures with Purpose were out there on the scene of Prosser Creek Reservoir for only around 45 minutes. They were at 14 foot deep of water, which is very shallow, and they were able to find Kylie's vehicle along with human remains in the car. Before Adventures with Purpose got involved, allegedly law enforcement had expressed that the lake had already been searched and there was nothing there to be found. 
but Adventures with Purpose persisted and that's how we ended up here. So the autopsy eventually confirmed that it was in fact Kylie Rodney. The cause of death along with toxicology reports still has yet to be determined. Authorities pulled Kylie Rodney's car out of this water. It was found upside down in 14 feet of water. Days later, there was this random dude on YouTube who decided to take his kayak out there to the lake and he found Kylie's laptop along with more of her belongings, including a bag. I found a ton of shit. Here I go. I'm gonna put my phone underwater. So this guy also said he called authorities afterwards and it took so long for anyone to come out there as if they didn't even want to have anything to do with it. But hours later, finally someone came out to look at the stuff he found. Truckee law enforcement is either extremely negligent to overlook such obvious items, along with the car, which was right off the bank, or there's some sort of suspicious behavior going on with them. If they're trying to hide something, they're not doing a very good job at it. The biggest question now is, how did her car get from the campground into the lake? According to locals, Kylie would have had to go off onto this dirt road that leads to the lake on her own. It's off the beaten path. You don't just run off the road into this lake. It's a destination. It's not just something along the way. You would have to go there intentionally. The next question is why was Kylie's body found in the back of the vehicle? If she were driving, wouldn't she be in the front? Another suspicious clue were the windows. One was rolled halfway down and the other rolled completely down. Almost as if someone allegedly escaped. Either that or maybe they wanted the car to sink. So they rolled the windows down so it would fill with water faster. So I want to share my opinion on what I think could have possibly happened to Kylie. I assume one of the adult males who were bothering all the girls at the party, as a lot of them stated, took advantage of Kylie once he saw all of her friends had left and she was all alone. Then one thing led to another and it all ended tragically at the lake. So rest in peace to Kylie Mae Rodney. I hope that her family and friends find some sort of comfort in their grief. Let me know in the comments what your theories are on what may have happened. So I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Hey, you think about landing this successfully, uh, allowed to go get me a job as a pilot? Uh, you know, I think they would give you a job doing anything if you could pull this off. Yeah, right. Do you seem comfortable with that? Oh, hell yeah, it's a blast, man. I've played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit.